Have P. Diddy and his defense team successfully gagged the U.S. government? <coughs> After a back and forth of motions and exhibits, the judge has decided who can say what in Diddy's sex trafficking case. Hey, I'm America's attorney. I've been a lawyer for over 23 years, helping over 20,000 lovely clients. And today, I'm gonna break down both sides' arguments for what the gag order should have been and what the judge ultimately decided. Let's get started. Now, Local Criminal Rule 23.1a says, it is the duty of the lawyer or law firm and of non-lawyer personnel employed by a lawyer's office or subject to a lawyer's supervision private investigators acting under the supervision of a criminal defense attorney and government agents and police officers not to release or authorize the release of non-public information or opinion which a reasonable person would expect to be disseminated by means of public communication in connection with pending or imminent criminal litigation with which they are associated if there's a substantial likelihood that such dissemination will interfere with a fair trial or otherwise prejudice the due administration of justice. The purpose of this rule and even enforcement of it is to make sure that criminal defendants have a fair trial. And that goal is accomplished by, or at least pursued by, making sure that the first time the members of the jury hear and see facts and evidence from the case, that they do so inside the courtroom, subject to the rulings of the court about evidence and subject to cross-examination. And also that they don't get exposed to inadmissible evidence or opinions from witnesses that would have never come in during the trial. And relevant to this P. Diddy case are quotes from unnamed law enforcement in which they supposedly tell reporters, this is the guiltiest guy that we've ever arrested. I mean, that's not verbatim, but that's close to what they said. And well, that's not fair to Combs, even if it's true. It's his right to have the jury hear only what a judge says is admissible evidence. And cops saying, wow, I mean, he's so guilty. That's not admissible. In fact, it's not even sane because that's not how cops get to talk in a trial. They report on facts and investigations. They never just give their opinion. And because he is famous, it's almost like he needs more protection from that outside influence because people can make the connection to him when they hear stories reported in the media. Look, if it's an alleged crime that no one cares about, no one's heard anything about it, there's a little media coverage, it's not gonna be extensive and it's not gonna like penetrate the minds of the jury pool. But with Combs, with Combs, it will. This case is a big deal in the eyes of the public. As I mentioned in previous videos, Sean Combs' team has requested a gag order for the prosecution and for the Department of Homeland Security after uh, leaks of information appeared in several news articles. The defense argued that these leaks of information were tarnishing Combs' public image, which he says is his job. No, I'm just kidding. He said it would keep him from having a fair trial. In response, the judge tasked both sides with proposing what such a gag order should say. The defense began by proposing that all assistant U.S. attorneys and staff members working under their supervision or at their direction and all local and federal law enforcement agents assisting any aspect of the investigation or prosecution of the above referenced case and any related grand jury proceedings, including but not limited to employees of the Department of Homeland Security, be covered by the gag order. <laughs> as well as the entire defense team. In comparison, the prosecution's proposal only included assistant U.S. attorneys assigned to the above-referenced matter and staff members working under their supervision or at their direction, collectively the government, and all local and federal law enforcement agents whom the government has provided with access to grand jury materials and the defense team. The main disagreement between the two sides that they've been having is how many of the government personnel should be covered by the gag order. As you can see by their proposals, the defense wants essentially everyone in the entire world to be included, while the government wanted only employees assigned to the case to be included. The government's motion claims that the defendant's proposal is plainly overbroad as it would require the government to be held accountable for potentially thousands of agents in an independent law enforcement agency over whom the government has no authority or oversight. Indeed, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security employs over 200,000 individuals and includes the investigation investigating agency here, Homeland Security Investigations, in addition to multiple other law enforcement agencies such as U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, U.S. Secret Service, and others with no role in this case whatsoever. 
such an order would simply be unenforceable. So who did the judge agree with? Well, hmm, kind of both and kind of neither, very much down the middle. Here's what the order from the judge says. Assistant U.S. attorneys and staff members working under their supervision or at their direction, collectively the government, and all local and federal law enforcement agents whom the government has provided with access to grand jury materials shall not disclose any grand jury material in violation of Federal Rule of Criminal Procedure 6E. Furthermore, the government and all local and federal law enforcement agents assigned to this case or the related investigation assisting with this case or the related investigation or who have assisted with this case or the related investigation shall comply with local rule 23.1. That's the rule I read to you at the beginning of the video. So the judge agreed that law enforcement needs to shut up, but the judge didn't agree. It's all law enforcement in the universe. Only those with access to secret non-public information from the grand jury proceedings. This was the most predictable ruling, mostly because it was the right ruling. Each side can claim that they won this motion, sort of. The spirit of the order is that neither side should be talking about the ruling. I mean, really, they are both asking for gag orders. But look, Comb wants to not be tried in the media and he is now getting what he wants. Any relevant attached or associated law enforcement with access to covered materials has to keep it zip. But also the government is happy that they will not be held accountable for leaks of non-private, non-grand jury, publicly known evidence and discussion of those things. But they also don't have to control the entire army of all law enforcement in the US and the known universe just those who are in the know on private information. Because look, the government wants Diddy to have a fair trial too. You think that they might just want a conviction and they do want that. But US attorneys want to play by the rules and they want to win by the rules. And they think they can in this instance. So you can expect them to be excited for the opportunity to go at Combs in the courtroom. And look, of course, this was just about the most low stakes disagreement that the two sides will have in the run up to this insane May 2025 trial. Things are going to get heated when the two sides start arguing about the evidence that comes in at trial. Very heated. But before then, tell me, what are your thoughts on the judge's ruling? Do you think that the leaks will stop now that the prosecution is bound by this order? Drop your pro se opinion down below in the comments and please let me know what you think. And if you want more in-depth coverage of PDD's case, make sure that you lawyer up and subscribe because I will be back soon with more videos and I will see you then. <laughs> Including but not limited to deploy... And also that they don't get exposed. <laughs> don't get <laughs> plainly overbroad as it would require the government to be held accountable. <laughs>